Welcome back, Conference USA Media Day. We continue here in Frisco, Texas. Now we turn our attention to FIU and the women's coach there. And we join Tierra Malcolm. Good to Thank see you me. again. Thanks. Thanks for and that. another new coach in Conference USA. Let's welcome again Jeremy Ballard. Jeremy, I'm going to go ladies first if you don't mind. Absolutely. Okay. Tierra, first I want to talk to you. This is your third year, but technically only your second full year. What did you learn last season, not only on the court, but as a head coach? Um, I think the biggest thing for me in, in my entire span of short time of being a head coach is just to go with your gut, you know, mm -hmm. don't second guess yourself, whatever decision is that you're going to go, that you're going to make, go with it and, and then live with whatever happens and be able to adjust after, afterwards. Well, you and I talked last season about how young of a team you had last year. This year, if I'm not mistaken, you got seven players, either sophomores or freshmen. Are you going to have to get the gray out of your hair at the end of the season? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? They, they've actually been they've been really, really good, you know, so mm -hmm. those gray hairs don't come yet. But like I say, you know, uh, we haven't won or lost the game yet. So <clears> I think that's where the character um, defining comes in. But um, so far in our preseason, they, they've been really, really good. Only three players on the team this season that actually played last season. That could be a good news, bad news situation. The good news of having that is it not having to retrain people or being able to add new stuff. Talk about that for a second. It's a, it's a mix of both. I mean, we're still kind of, we're, we're taking our <clears throat> offensive system and we're, we're tweaking it a little bit um, to cater to the players that we now have. But you talk about having <clears throat> players that are more skilled now, mm -hmm. um, you know, having a, a um, dominating post downside that we're gonna be able to kind of dump the ball inside to. I'm, I'm very, very excited about that. Well, let's talk about rebounding for a second because one of the stats that stand, stood out, not a positive step, but you allowed 14.2 offensive rebounds a game. Was that something you had to put a little check mark next to because we have to work on that this season? Oh, absolutely. I mean, in every drill that we do, that's a that's an <laughs> emphasis for us, and, and the players know it. You know, we talk about going to go find a body, you know, hitting someone, um, and, and it's, it was, at first, it was a little uncomfortable for them. You know, they had to kind of step outside their box and, Coach, wait, you want – yes, it's a game of basketball. I actually want you to be physical. Um, but they're starting to grasp the concept with that in particular of what we want. Uh, Jeff Nitty of the Kansas State told me last week, he says, I'm going to be insane on rebounding. And I always thought that was a great line. <laughs> I think a lot of coaches would be that. I look at your season. You had some very impressive wins last year. You beat Rice. You beat Louisiana Tech back-to-back -back games. Final regular season game, you beat Southern Miss. Mm -hmm. Good starting point for this season, right? Absolutely. I mean, you talk about um, those teams being at the top um, of our league, and the key for us is just to continue to improve. And I talk about it, you know, every day in practice, coming off a good practice, coming off a bad practice, you know, continue to get better. Pick something that you as an individual are going to do so that we as a program can continue to get better. Give us names that we should keep an eye on this season. Um, I'm going to go Chelsea. Okay. Obviously, the, the post down low. Um, Cabrilla Lee is going to be pretty good for us this year. Um, she so started three games last season. Is she going to move into the starting spot mm -hmm. this year? Um, we haven't determined starters yet, okay. and I think that's mm -hmm. probably another good thing about us. You know, mm -hmm. they're still fighting for positions. Um, they're still fighting for starting positions, and I think that everyone, um, no one's taking a bat seat to anyone else. You know, we tell them every day, continue to play, continue to fight, continue to push. Um, I have some pretty good freshmen that are going to be pretty good for us. You talk about um, Kylie O'Hara, you talk about um, Sanara Skeens, and then Paris Netherly, and then, um, you know, kind of running the point for us. And again, she's still fighting for a starting spot, Paula Sanchez. I, I want to talk about Kylie O'Hara real quickly mm -hmm. here because she's from Canada. She was invited to the Canadian National Training Camp. How important was that for her to see that level of play? Oh, it's, it's, it's been really, really good. And you talk about her missing um, a significant part of the summer. Actually, she missed the entire summer with mm -hmm. us. So her basis of being in our system and knowing what it is that we want, she's only three months in. And her improvement on a day-to-day -day basis has been, it's been great. She played forward, though, in high school. Does she have to play guard now? Is it a learning process for yeah, her? She's going to do a little bit of both. Um, <laughs> and you talk about being uh, having the responsibility of playing two positions. It's tough for pretty much anyone. But now a freshman just coming in, missed the entire summer. She's been doing an incredible job with it. I wish you the best. We're going to go to the men's side right yeah. now. Jeremy Ballard joins us in his first year. He's part of that Virginia Commonwealth connection. If you work for Shaka Smart, chances are you're going to get a head coaching position. Uh, Talk about the, the pedigree you have, and you and I were chatting earlier, some of the people you've worked with, very impressive, and every coach I talk to that's had that pedigree, they try to take a little bit of something from everything. 
Fair? Yes, certainly. Um, I've been extremely fortunate for the people that I've worked for. Um, Coach Smart, as, as you alluded to, um, we had a great deal of success while I was there in, in my four years at VCU. Um, but every coach that I've worked with, I, I've taken a lot of things from them. Um, most recently, Mike Rhodes at VCU, um, Kevin Stallings at Pitt, Dan Moe, Illinois State, Doug Wojcik, uh, Tulsa, uh, and my college coach, Emmett Davis at Colgate. Um, I, I've learned a lot from those guys. Um, they taught me a lot of great things to, in a lot of different ways to skin the cat. So uh, we'll do a lot of things similar to how we did at VCU uh, with our own spin on it as well. Sixth member of Shaka Smart's teams that is now a head coach right now. Very, very impressive. Um, only starters back, one of them, Trajan Jacob. Second leading scorer, 14 and a half points a game. What's it like having these guys coming back? And you only have two starters, basically. And how do you try to reform them into what you want to do? Certainly. Well, I was fortunate to inherit two, um, two starters from last year that scored a lot of points, uh, Trajan Jacob, Brian Beard. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we're, we're really a perimeter-oriented attack, uh, both offensively and defensively. So having those two guys uh, as kind of benchmarks for what we're doing ha has been a great help for us. Um, and, and now we're just trying to change things around in terms of the mentality towards winning. And uh, these guys have helped lead the way with that. Now, you mentioned Brian Beard. And, and one of the things I noticed watching tape from last year, he thrives on the pick and roll. It seems to me he's a perfect fit for your system. Definitely. I appreciate you saying that. And uh, we tell him that every day, too. <laughs> um, so uh, he, he also he led the conference in steals last year. Um, in conference play, he led the conference in assists. So in, in our up-tempo style of play and, and really uh, kind of pace and space style of offense, um, I really think he can build on those types of numbers. Um, I, I think he can have even more steals, more assists, and be even more efficient scoring the basketball as well. Your front court has a lot of options coming into this year, but not conventional low post scoring. Is, is that a fair statement? Yeah, that's a key word. It's, it's not conventional. Um, and, and with all due respect, I, I'm not really um, concerned with being conventional at all. Uh, in fact, we're, we're looking for being unconventional. And, and we're going to try to be innovative in the way we try to get defensive stops. We're going to try to be innovative in the way we get scores on the offensive end. I, I really appreciate it earlier when you and I were chatting about the season. You were very open about you really look at the school, they don't have a whole lot of tradition as far as basketball. You have embraced that fact and you want to build on it. Is that something that attracted you in kind of an odd sense that I want to come here and try to start a tradition? Absolutely. I, I tell our guys all the time. I tell recruits all the time. We have a chance to build a legacy starting right now. Uh, we don't have anything to do with what happened in the past, but we have everything to do with what happens right now in the present and what happens going forward in the future. And, and our guys have really taken that on as a challenge. Um, it's been exciting, and hopefully we can do something and, and build a consistent winner that hasn't happened before. Three-point shooting was in the bottom, I'd say, 10% probably of the NCAA, over 315. Is that something that you've worked on? shooting in the offseason. Absolutely. Um, you know, you, you, you can't shoot that poorly in this day and age in, in basketball and, and, you know, win with any type of consistency. So um, we put a huge emphasis on shooting the ball, getting open shots in the perimeter, um, and then defending the three-point line as well. well. We need to win the three-point battle in each and every game that we play in. So um, I think these guys have probably shot more than they've ever had in, uh, in the past, and we do a lot of running and a lot of shooting. One final question here. What name might surprise us this year. You mentioned your two big returning starters, obviously, but is there somebody that we should keep an eye on this season? Yeah, I mean, hopefully the, the name FIU will surprise a lot of people. Like and, and um, you know, it's, uh, I think it's kind of been synonymous with maybe, you know, being mediocre in the past, and, and uh, we're planning on changing that going forward. Tara, one more question for you, and I, I, I'm asking all the coaches this. I'm a big ba women's basketball fan, obviously, from WNBA to whatever. Does this conference get enough credit for women's basketball. You look at UAB, you look at Western Kentucky, you look at Rice, you go down the list. This is a tough conference. Does it not get the credit it deserves? I don't think we do, but I, I will say the things that the coaches have done um, as far as promoting and as far as bringing really, really good product into the league, you know, hopefully the, the thing is that we continue to bring those really good players into the league and we go out and earn ourselves some respect. And a final question, since he's from Colgate, does he use like words that you don't even know? No, <laughs> no absolutely not. No. <laughs> well, we, we do the same haunts in Hamilton, New York, so that was kind of scary right there. Welcome to the conference. I wish you the best of luck. Good thank seeing you, you again. You. We'll continue with Conference USA Media Days in a moment.